we're going to be working on today are piecewise functions, which you have done a little bit of your piecewise functions in the past. You did these actually back in Algebra 1. So taking a look again, I'm just reviewing continuous graph versus a discontinuous graph. A continuous one means that there are no breaks in the graph. Discontinuous means there are breaks in the graph. It's not all connected. It doesn't flow nicely from one point to the next. So if we take a look at our graph that I have put in here for you, this is an example again of a discontinuous graph because you have this piece of your function right here and then it breaks and it goes up to that piece of the function over there. So you have a discontinuous graph, two different pieces. This is also what we call our piecewise graph because it's got different pieces. That's why we call it piecewise. Kind of fits right in there. So our normal regular stuff that we do for a function is going to be exactly the same. F of 2 simply means you go to where x is a 2. You find where your graph is. So x is a 2 is right here. My graph is right there on my x-axis. So that's a 0. So f of 2 is a 0. So next one, f of negative 1. So I'm going to go to where x is negative 1, find my graph. It's right down there at what? Negative 3. So next one, f of negative 1 half. We haven't done halves too much, but you just go over halfway. Go down to where your graph is. It hits right there at negative 2. And then our last one there, f of 0. Well, there's two spots at 0, but do both of those two spots count? No. This one doesn't count because it's open. So f of 0 would be a 1. And because that one spot is open, that's why it's still a function. It would still pass your vertical line test there. So a piecewise function is a function that is defined by different equations on intervals of its domain. The above function is defined like this. So this is how we would write our equation for a piecewise function. We have two pieces. 2x minus 1 is the equation that they used only when x was less than 0, for all those values less than 0, is when they use that equation. And then negative 1 half x plus 1 is the equation they used for the other piece, and that was for the x values that are 0 or greater. So using this equation, we're going to find these different graphs here. So f of negative 1. So now when all you have is the equation to go off of, a little trickier because you have to do a little bit more thinking to it. But f of negative 1, so you have to think to yourself, is negative 1 less than 0 or greater than 0? Negative 1, less than 0 or greater than 0? Less than. So since it's less than 0, that means it falls in this interval. You're going to use that part of the equation to figure out the value. So we plug negative 1 into that part. So 2 times negative 1, negative 2, minus 1, negative 3. Both negative, so negative 3. So our next one, f of 4. So again, is 4 less than 0 or greater than 0? Greater than. So we're going to plug it into this part of the equation. So negative 1 half times 4 plus 1. So that's here. Negative 1 half times 4 gives us negative 2. Plus 1 gives us negative 1. So 5 times f of 0 minus 2. So we got to first figure out what f of 0 is. So this one is just simply less than 0. The second one is greater than or equal to 0. So which one would we want to use? The bottom one. We want to use the second one. So I'm going to keep my 5 out there. It's still got to hang out there. So we got negative 1 half times 0 plus 1. That's how we're going to figure out our f of 0. Just plugging my 0 into that equation. 
and then we got to subtract 2. So our order of operations, parentheses first, anything times 0 is 0, plus 1 gives me a 1, so 5 times 1 minus 2, so 5 times 1 is 5, minus 2 gives us Final answer for that one. So in our last one, we got f of negative 10 plus 2 times f of positive 10. So negative 10 would fall in our less than 0. So we've got to use that part of the equation for it. So 2 times negative 10 minus 1. So let's go ahead and figure out that value. What is 2 times negative 10? Negative 20 minus 1 more. You give us negative 21. So f of negative 10 is negative 21. And then it's plus 2 times f of 10. Now f of 10 being positive is going to fall in the other part of the equation. So that's negative one half times the ten plus one. So negative one half times ten gives us negative five. Negative five plus one gives me a negative four. So what is two times negative four? Negative eight. Negative 21 minus 8, negative 29. All right, so now I'm going to change the equation on you. So now we're going to use g of x is those two equations. We use the top part when it's less than or equal to 1. And then we're going to use the bottom part whenever it's greater than 1. So less than or equal to 1, first one, greater than 1, and we're going to use the second one. So f of negative, or sorry, g of negative 4. Negative 4 would be less than 1, so we're going to use that first equation there. So negative from the equation, because it's negative x, and then I also plug in my negative 4 for my x, and then minus my 2. So minusing a negative, what does that do? It really means you're adding it. So then 4 minus 2 gives us a 2. So then for b, we got a lot of parentheses here. We got even a bracket here. That's the way the calculator does it a lot. It puts it in as a bracket once you get more than one in there. So we've got bracket g of 1 minus g of 2, and then that is squared. So we've got to figure out the stuff in the brackets first, and then we can square it. So g of 1 is still going to be that first one, because that's when it's less than or equal to 1. So 1 is still part of that. So we've got negative 1 minus 2. Negative 1 minus 2, that's going to give me a negative 3. I put it in parentheses just because that's all together. That's how we figure out our g of 1. That gives us a negative 3. So let's figure out the other one. g of 2, 2 is greater than 1. So that means we're going to use the second equation down there. I'm going to plug a 2 in for that x. So 2 times 2 squared minus 3. And I finish off my bracket there. So what is 2 squared? 4, and then 4 times 2. 8 minus 3, minus 5. And then it's just minus 5 because it was a subtraction sign before your g of 2. So you're just going to subtract that 5. So 
negative 3 minus 5, negative 8, negative 8 squared, 64. So it's just all about figuring out, okay, well, which section am I going to be in based on where my numbers are? And then you just plug into that value. So now we're going to do a graph because sometimes we do need to graph these things. So since you have two sections, you have two equations, you want to have two tables. One table for each of your equations. So I like to label I, those are my two pieces, negative x minus 2, and then 2x squared minus 3. So again, the negative x minus 2 is for values that are less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to use my calculator. I'm going to help me get a table of values. And I definitely want to have 1 on there because it's less than or equal to 1. And then again, I want numbers less than that. So I'm just going to pick a few. I'm just going to go down to my values. So then let's go to our calculator. Type this into our y equals. And then we can fill in the rest of our table. Negative x minus 2. We go to my table. So I got one, negative three, and then zero, negative two, negative one, negative one, negative two, zero, and then negative three, one. Now the only other thing you have to be careful of when you're drawing these graphs is because this one was x is less than or equal to one. At that point, 1, negative 3, you will have a closed circle because it was or equal to. When we go to graph the other section, we're not going to always have a closed circle. But plotting my points that I got from my table and my calculator. I'm going to draw myself a nice straight line. So there's that first piece, and it is going to keep going because it was, you know, everything less than 1, so there will be an arrow on my left side there. There won't be anything, though, beyond that point 1, negative 3 for this graph. It's going to stop at 1, negative 3. So then for that other half, we're doing that section for when one is or for when x is greater than one but we're still going to want to have one in the table because we need to use that point to help us figure out where we're going to be so even though it's supposed to be greater than one you still got to put the one in the table we still need that point to help us graph it correctly so 2x squared minus 3 so I'll go back to my y equals 2x squared minus 3 So we got 1, negative 1, 2, 5, 3, 15, 29, and 47. Well, I definitely won't be able to graph those, but I can still write them in my table. So again, x is greater than 1 was our inequality for this time. So at that point, 1, negative 1, we are going to put an open circle because it's not actually equal to that point, but we need that point to be able to make our graph accurate. And so then my next point is going to be the point two five, and then that's all I can graph for this one. So I'm just going to draw a line connecting those. Put an arrow over there on that right side because that graph is definitely going to keep going. And then as for my label, because it is in function notation, all we have to label it as is g of x. You don't have to write the whole thing. Just that function part, g of x. It makes the labeling nice and easy. Okay, there's our graph. So you just got to do each piece and graph them 
within the domain. So for graph number four, how many tables are we going to have? Three. We're going to have a table for the absolute value of x. We're going to have a table for negative x squared plus 4. And then we're going to have a table just for the 4. All right, so starting with my first one, absolute value of x. That's for when x is less than 1. So again, 1 is still going to be part of my table. I still need that value, although it will be an open circle. And I need values less than that. So going down 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 will work. So in our calculator, who remembers, where is our absolute value sign? Math. Yep, over to the right. Once that first one, ADS, that is your absolute value. And then we just put our x in there. It was just absolute value of x, so we just got to put an x in there. So looking at my table, we got 1, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 3, 3. So again, 1, 1, going to be an open circle. And then the rest of them would just be normal certain dots to plot your point. And then there's our first section. Looks kind of like a check mark. It's up backwards. So then our middle table, our middle equation, says that it's going from 1 to 4. So those are the only values we're going to have in there. 1, 2, 3, and 4. And they both have the or equal to. So these are all going to be closed circles when we do go to the graph them. So negative x squared plus 4. Let's put that in. Negative x squared plus 4. Go to our table. So we got 3, 0, negative 5, negative 2. And then we'll plot those. So one, two, two, zero. Now, four negative twelve is not going to actually fit on my graph, but because it is a closed circle, I'm just going to kind of estimate it. That won't happen on your test. You'll have the full graph space on your test to do it. There's that piece. And then our last part for the 4, that's going to be when x is greater than a 4. So again, I'm going to have 4 in there because I need that placeholder there. And then the equation is just 4. So all my y values are 4. It's what we call our constant. It's the same number every time. You could put it in your calculator if you really wanted to, but you're just going to get all 4s. So 4, 4. I'm going to put an open circle there. And then 5, 4. 6, 4. And then I'm going to put an arrow because that's going to keep going on forever. And I'm going to label my graph there as h of x. So again, table for each section, and then just label it with your function notation. All right, and our last part here, question number five. For the piecewise linear function given by this equation, find all solutions to the equation f of x equals 2 algebraically. 
So f of x equals 2, remember, this is saying that the function equals 2. If they had wanted me to put a 2 in for x, how would they have written it? If the 2 was in the parentheses, that's when you plug in for x. This way means you're setting it equal to 2. So we're going to take both parts of the equation, set them both equal to 2, so my negative 2x plus 10 equals 2, and my 3x minus 4 equals 2. So we solve for x in both equations. Subtract my 10. That gives me a negative 8. Divide by our negative 2, and what does x end up equaling? 4. So then you have to check them. In this part of the equation, for the negative 2x plus 10, x has to be less than 0. Is 4 less than 0? No. So we got to reject that. That's not actually going to be an answer because we don't have the graph at that point in time. Then we'll go over here, solve this one. So we'll add 4. 3x equals 6. Divide by 3, and x equals 2. So for that section of graph, it's for when x is greater than or equal to 0. So that is acceptable. We can keep that. We will have that x value during that section of the graph. So we got one answer.